Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. February 1st already. Hope everyone's doing all right. It's the weekly community call for chaos. I'm Elizabeth. I'm not the whole chaos community, as it says. I will change my name, but I am Elizabeth. I'm the community manager. So it's really good to hear have you here. I can't type and talk at the same time. Sorry. Um, yeah. All right. Let's get going. Let me share. All right. Ah, so first thing is if you would like to add your name to the agenda, that would be great. If you don't want to, you do not have to 100%. Um, and of course, always want to just confirm you do not need to have your camera on. You can keep it off. We're super casual here. We do not care. We're just happy to see you. Uh, okay, first item is the very most important uh, item on our agenda. And I know it's only important to me, but I don't care. So it's important we're gonna, to me also. We're gonna <laughs> um, the Cincinnati Bengals right here, my team, my hometown team is going to the Super Bowl. Thank you very much. Has not yeah. happened since and 1989. Who yeah who, who guaranteed that last week um sean did yes yeah. so thank you sean <laughs> joe burrow thanks joe burrow well. their quarterback is amazing yeah he is he's pretty fantastic um and just for a little context i was a senior in high school when that happened <laughs> and i'm a grandmother now so there you go it's a big deal <laughs> i just wanted everyone to oh, share it's huge it's huge <laughs> yeah it's, it's the city is kind of losing their minds about it like i'm not gonna lie like oh, yeah. orange and black everything yes it's amazing and you will see me in orange garb from here until the super bowl which is in two weeks so get ready because i I'll pull them all out i had them all archived away in tins and bins and everything else and it's all coming out so you have a helmet you know. that you could wear i'm sorry you have a helmet that you could wear for one of our I meetings do not I do not have a helmet. I, I have, however, you will see it at some point, is a an official 1980s trucker hat, which has uh, been autographed by Boomer Esiason, in case oh, you know wow. that is, um, yeah. Kenny Anderson, and the third one I can't remember. I'll have to dig it out, but you'll For see Tim, a hat. Tim Crumry? Not, I don't think Tim, yeah. I did watch that game, though, with, yeah. Yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, it's not pretty. Okay, so anyway, enough of American football. Thank you all for indulging me in my celebration time. I'm ready to move on. Um, we did have a couple of chaos blog posts, which were posted. If you haven't had a chance to read them, I would encourage you to do so. I've linked them here in the minutes. Um, Anita Ihuman wrote this about the badging, um, badging program, which the uh, version three was released a little bit ago um, before the holidays. And so Anita just gave us a nice write up of what's changed and kind of how that's going. Um, and then uh, for those of us who have been in chaos for a little bit, you might know that we have been doing an internal DEI audit or reflection on the um, kind of our policies and practices around centering diversity, equity, and inclusion here at chaos. And so I wrote up a blog post about how that went, um, what we learned, what were recommendations are, kind of what's coming in the future. Um, so if you're curious about kind of how that went, you should go read that. And then if you have any questions at all, you can obviously reach out to me or Matt or Sean or anyone. Uh, Ruth is also on that team. Um, anyone else on that team, you're more than welcome to reach out to them. Justin Flory, you might know him as well. So yeah. Um, any comments, questions about that or either of those blog posts? Sean's getting a phone call, I think. Yeah, I have to silence my little watch here. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so the next item on our agenda is the GSOC applications, which are due, uh, well, that's not, our application to GSOC is due February 21st. That's what I meant here. Sorry, if anyone's on the call, that's a student. I didn't mean to freak you out. Matt or Sean, you wanna talk a little bit about that? Is there, what, what do we need to? Yeah, so I mean, really what we need here is just interest from the chaos project to participate in Google Summer of Code. And and we do need to have, as I recall, we have to have our projects defined by the deadline of February 21st. Yeah, we've sometimes, I think we've kind of done that in parallel. It's nice just to get it done yeah. by February 21st because we, we link out to the projects on GitHub so we can always kind of change them a little bit. 
right you know there's like a issue basically we create an issue for each project and those those are like the tryouts for the people who are trying to be gsoc students yeah so i think if, if people have um so that the org application is not that complex it's like give us your logo you know give us a link to your site have you participated in the past how many students have you mentored it's that kind of stuff yeah um but then there's the kind of as sean was pointing out like the more detailed things that we need so it would be like two projects that auger would be interested in for, i'm totally making that up two yeah, projects yeah. that, that lab. Grimoire lab folks from Grimoire lab might be interested in um two projects that um the chaos community might be interested in so for example like with ritik and yash here right um kind of the the release process kind of thing so yeah just and we can have mars also we can yeah, have yeah right yeah, exactly. mars would be a candidate on that. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think you know sean you should probably start thinking about a couple things that you want from an auger perspective yeah um, and also also, yeah, also thinking from a community, I, I got it on my to do list to get in, to talk with Daniel about getting some general chaos software working group work going. And okay. maybe we can do something around that. Um, I'm trying to, I think we do this in the governance repo. So here, here's a link. in the community repo. And here, so we'll have to kind of update this. If you click on that link, Elizabeth, the community one, not that one. The one above it, yeah. I think, yeah, the GSOC, we basically was, we're, we assembled the GSOC ideas in here mm -hmm. ahead of the application. And of course we did, we did edit these um, after the application deadline to some extent, but so we don't we like you, to have them somewhat yes. defined. Yep. And so you can see that we don't um, necessarily um, archive these. We just kind of keep this rolling this rolling markdown file mm -hmm. for the ideas so we can just contribute sean you could modify this yeah we don't archive this markdown as last year's ideas right we can just issue prs against this mm -hmm. to update it and it, so yeah if um if you have ideas i think it would be good to start doing pull requests into that repo to, to get them yep enumerated yep and then we have the the interested candidates the gsoc interest dot markdown and so we'll just we need to clear this out that's from last year right i can take i'll take it to do to okay clean clean it up um do that sooner rather than later and this process has worked really really well where we have the ideas, we have a sp specific set of micro tasks that we ask applicants to do. And then the mentors, whoever is kind of interested in that particular um, idea or relate the mentors who are associated with that particular idea kind of go through and review the micro task and just take a look at the work that was done. The process works really, really well. Yeah. Anyone have questions for Sean and Matt? If someone, I have a question. If yeah, someone yeah. is interested in being a mentor, um, who, how, where should they indicate that interest? Just PR or? Usually, usually the mentors come from a come along with a project idea. But if people just want to mentor, we can support that. Could they document that somewhere or? Yeah, that's. Yeah, they could just send an, uh, maybe a, a note to me in Slack or something like that if you want to serve as a mentor. Yeah, yeah we, we like don't really have it. Yeah. Because it's this a... time I was thinking to apply as a mentor rather than a student. Sure. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I mean, that's totally, totally maybe fine. we should create a GSOC 2022 channel temporarily. We for... could. 
Rich, yeah. you can you can be a mentor on the uh, the operations tasks that uh, that I was planning. So you and I can mentor together. Yeah, sure. I can be the student. <laughs> right on. I don't well, think we good. can make those promises at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you an action item, Matt, to start the G S O C two O two two channel. Okay. I already I already created the channel. <gasps> Okay. Yes, so easy. And then you can mark it complete. So yay. You're welcome. But we may want to mark it as private, Sean. Oh, okay. Just because I don't know what kind of discussions we want to have in there. But the only challenge is um who do I know to invite to the private channel? I'm thinking like this. I'm I'm thinking this would be the place a place where people could volunteer to be a mentor or post candidate projects something. Mm -hmm. i think when it comes to making decisions about okay who we keep that has to be private like the chaos con right. deliberations well maybe put that in the description then okay for the channel I, that's we can have two right yeah um and then just elizabeth to your point we really i don't think we have a document that specifies what it takes to be a mentor just interest <laughs> probably okay fair enough any other questions comments all right we can go on um this one is the next one is the dei badging meeting changes uh just as an fyi to people i don't know that there's a lot of people here that go to those but anyway just going to throw it out here um we used to have separate meetings for the, the outreach and just regular dei badging um we decided today to combine those into one and then make the badging meeting uh, instead of 30 minutes we'll just extend it to 50 minutes um not starting tomorrow tomorrow is still a half an hour but next week it'll be and they'll continue to be every wednesday at 8 30 a.m u.s central chicago time so okay and they'll even when they're an hour, they'll still start at eight thirty. They will start at eight thirty, but they may okay. not go the full hour. Gotcha. So. That's a good idea. All mm -hmm. this, like, just to bring okay. meetings together. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of. Yeah, <laughs> I am too. Off. <laughs> but they're they're good, and also the the DEI badging, um, the outreach was very very like intense at the beginning, and now you know we're it's kind of running itself. So those discussions are a lot fewer and um i don't want to say less intense but <laughs> intense made it sound like yes we weren't like that at all but there was just a lot to do and now it's more organically growing so okay <clears throat> any other questions about that and that should be on the calendar as well so i don't know if i fixed the time yet i don't think i did that yet that's on my list actually i'll just do it here All right. <clears throat> um, okay, well, let's move on. The next one says adding Slack bookmarks and generally keeping Slack organized. And that I'm guessing was Matt G. Well, that's me. So I learned that you can add Slack bookmarks to a channel, which is like a link to the meeting minutes. I had no idea. That's super oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I haven't known about that. That's that is super cool. And so I've started doing it for every channel. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bunch of bookmarks that you don't want, just delete them because I thought it was the coolest thing and I just went through every channel and started adding bookmarks. Where, where do they show up? At the top. So like if you open up the channel, yeah. and you see like if you open up like say general yeah, and you scroll down to the bottom, see where it says home dash chaos? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do like bookmarks to meeting minutes. You can do bookmarks to uh, like I web see. pages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. So thank you, Don, for, for showing that. Um, and then I, I've also been doing just a little bit of cleanup on our Slack channels. I think Slack has a tendency of having a proliferation of channels <laughs> within an organization. And so we have, we removed uh the reviewers the badging reviewers channel there was really no activity in there and we just we renamed the badging channel which was named badging cdt 
for some reason. We've just renamed it badging. Um, so anyway, just kind of always looking at our Slack channels. And then the one thing that came up is right now, uh, common and metrics models have their own channels. I don't know if other working groups, if it makes sense to create channels for other working groups. So like would risk benefit from a Slack channel? Would evolution benefit from a Slack channel? And if the answer is no, that's totally fine. Just something that crossed my mind. Sean? Yeah. I yeah, agree with what, that. I don't have anything to say about Slack channels other than that. It sounds. Do you think? Uh, do you think evolution would benefit from its own Slack channel, or risk? I mean, Does it make sense or not really? I think we had a we have a risk channel actually. Um, it hasn't been posted in since uh, November, but there is a risk channel. This is this is one of the things about Slack is if you don't know the channels there, you don't see it right away. Is but there risk, a channel? Yeah, there is a risk channel. I'll post it in general. I think from from a uh, evolution standpoint, I would say I don't think we need one right now, but okay. I think we would be comfortable bringing one in if we at at some point if we did need one. Okay. I don't I don't think we need to force the issue. Our yeah our numbers are kind of small right now. So okay, right on. Same for the value working group. I feel like if we need it, then we can create one. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, although with this new bookmark feature, it might actually have some utility for like links to meeting minutes and things and metrics that we're working on. I, I, yeah, so I think I think an I'd like an evolution model i'd like an evolution channel do you want me to make it or do you want to make it um it's up to you all you right can do it. Yeah. yeah and just follow the naming convention can you rename risk to to, to wg risk wd jazz risk yeah yeah that yeah that, that that name's been there that channel's been there for a while let me um okay we don't have to all watch me do this. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And Anybody then... have questions or comments? Okay, we'll move on then. And if you have questions about Slack or something, a comment, you can just yell it out at any time. It's totally fine. So I, uh, I actually, I guess I, I do have one comment, I guess. Uh, adding new channels i think we we need to be we need to be careful that we're not adding too many uh because that uh that does create uh confusion and uh multiple multiple places where communication could happen where it's maybe not being uh repeated in other places so that that kind of affects transparency uh so i guess just be I think we need to be kind of focused on where our work and our conversations are occurring. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my general inclination is to shut down channels, but if we can like have the conversation in one channel that was occurring across three, yeah, like we had badging reviewers and badging, like let's just put it in badging. So. Yeah, I agree with Matt. If we have so many channels, then it, uh, so many kind of problems can arise as well. A lot of... Uh, I don't know if we have any way, any place we have indicated our main means of communication. I think the mailing list presumably is, if, is the main, but are we, uh, did we write that down somewhere? I don't think so, and I would... I would probably say at this point, Slack has taken over as the main form of communication, just for like newcomers and stuff. And okay. yeah, that seems to get the most activity right now. Okay. Maybe we should kind of update this list yeah, to say our main, point, like yeah, start but... here, start in Slack, and then here's other stuff. That's a good idea. So... That way, at least we're kind of funneling people that can that can join Slack. Yeah, start it, start start there. Yep. Okay. Cool. This one is actually just a, a list. Uh, 
we are we are contemplating creating a uh, uh, kind of that that joining. Uh, I think someone referred to it as like a choose your own adventure document. So we are we are looking to create that type of document that would uh, kind of guide people to where they want to go. And I, th I think that would be uh, probably a separate page from that one we were just on. So that one we are the one we were just on is it really just is a list of all of the things. <laughs> without much guidance on what they are. Great, okay, cool. Um, all right, the next one on our list is moving common work to the common working group. <laughs> yeah, I saw that Slack conversation pop up uh, minutes so, before so, the meeting. So, Don was all, Don was okay with it. I don't know if Don is on the call right now. Um, but in particular, this started with the work that um, that Sophia and Lucas are doing um, around like the ethics and the privacy and just things to think about, just because that has an impact across the entire chaos project. And the thought was to have that conversation in the common working group because it's something that is common across the project and everybody seemed okay with that. So we'll have that conversation over in the common working group. And then uh, the other one that, that had crossed my mind was particularly the work that uh, Ritik and Yash had done with Mars in the release process. And I, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. So I'm, I love some feedback on that. Uh, but because the release process is something that certainly affects the entire project, that those conversations would also occur in common. My one hesitation is that the Mars project is pretty big. It's pretty substantial. Um, and it, it just may occupy a lot of time sometimes. So I don't know what other people's thoughts are on that. I guess if we can't discuss the whole project during the common working group we can you know at least schedule a one-off meet because i don't feel we need to discuss the mars project regularly maybe once a month that would be okay i had made a i had made a comment in that slack channel uh so the the mars project is part of the the release process so the mars project itself is a project within the 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 release process. Uh, so the, the release itself could be a common issue, uh, but the common work group already has stuff they're working on. So I, I do worry about throwing too much at common. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think the what I had uh, what I had proposed is maybe we kind of have uh, updates from maybe the release team or from those those entities that are that are joining uh the common working group so kind of treat it the same way we do these these community meetings where you have a let's have an update from the uh, uh diversity equity and inclusion working group let's have an update from value yep. uh and just kind of treat it to start with maybe just do those updates and kind of keep the task work separate from common uh, yeah and maybe a lot of the task work can be async as well yeah which would be cool it's just this is it's kind of like the slack conversation we had prior just in an effort to reduce <laughs> yeah the number of meetings like if we can have it in one place it, yeah. yeah regarding the those 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 common community elements you know we have we've tried to have uh, a community meeting that would uh, that would look at the release and website management and things like that in the past and we really haven't gotten much interest or attendance uh, so in 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 some ways, like moving it to common, I'm I'm hopeful <laughs> that it that it'll help us grab more interest and more people working on these tasks. Uh, but it, but at the same time, I do realize that the uh, those operations tasks are kind of they're not as fun as maybe defining a new metric. So the the day to day stuff. So uh, so maybe what I'm hearing is let, let let's give it a try <laughs> and see how it goes particularly with the data ethics discussion and then also with the metrics release discussion. And they could be, to your point, Kevin, just updates. So is the um, 
is the to do item or the follow up um, concerning privacy to um, add a regular agenda item to, uh, to the common meeting to discuss yeah. privacy? Yep. Okay. And to Kevin's point, we'll have it's a it's a good crowd of good people in that meeting as well to really talk about this important issue. And Lucas, too, the meeting, it's at 10 a.m. U.S. Central every other Thursday. So we can also talk about moving times is that if that's not convenient for you. Um, that is, I can't, as, long, as long as my wife's willing to take the kids to school. Okay. She's, she's not always going to go along with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, know that know that we can talk that we can think about moving the meeting to a time that's convenient for the folks that really want to be there okay any other final comments on the common working group um does it include uh model stuff uh as far as the slack channel goes because we've been doing a lot of uh, model stuff in the common group, I believe. It, it'll include a metrics development. So probably not models so much, but more of the atomic metrics. Okay. All right, are we good? Can we, should we go ahead? Yeah, and thank you everybody for that. I think that that's really a good Good way of doing things. Math, can you post the Slack channel just in case? Uh... For common? Or just no, the, general? the general channel? Yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, you bet. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda is that we are starting to move forward with our DEI reflection items. Um, I know Matt probably wants to talk about this. A lot of that stuff was mentioned in this blog post, if you're not sure, this blog post up here, if you're not sure what that is, or you want some context around that for any newcomers or anybody who's not familiar with this project. Yeah, it's just, it's just mostly letting people know. And I think we have started with a number of these things. So like the translation efforts kind of stemmed from some of those recommendations. Elizabeth, all the work that you're doing like around newcomers and onboarding stems a lot from that conversation as well. Um, so I just like to say that we're, we're looking at, at implementing these. And so you there, we've been asking the audit team to participate in um, kind of the more regular chaos meetings, you know, like the say, for example, the DEI work group meeting or the common meeting. Um, so you may see folks kind of showing up and and um, looking to participate and help move some of these um, the suggested items forward. So that's the comment there. Awesome. Who has questions? Anybody? All right, we will move on now to some stuff from last week. So, drum roll, da, 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 da. we uh, took a poll and decided that we wanted to give ourselves a name. Um, and the new name we are is the Chaotix. Woo -hoo. Mm -hmm. So now you can be like, hey, Chaotix, what's up? Or I'm, I'm a Chaotic. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know what else we'll say with it. It's got but... t-shirts written all over it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Chaotics. That is our name. And I don't, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do with it. Um, the poll was here. If you want to see, where is that? It was somewhere down here. This thing. If you want to see what the other ones were, we can look. Here were the results. Chaotics or chaos, something else. Agents of chaos, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. So good job, everyone. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, we'll it sounds like a band. Right? Should be All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, the next one was the, I figured that would be a little more like exciting. I don't know. Um, I'm excited about the chaotics. So yeah. 
Uh, Chaos Community Mural is also another fun project that we're doing because um, Chaos is turning five. And so we wanted to just kind of showcase all of the people who have participated either in the past or in the present, um, small, big, whatever. If you have done literally anything, showed up at a meeting, um, if you have, I don't know, listened to some Chaos Cast, if you follow us on Twitter, if you're, you know, a, a newcomer in our Slack channel, like anything, we would really like to include your picture in our big photo mural that we're putting together. Um, if you would like details on what we're looking for uh, specifically, like file formats and all that, and where to put your photos, uh, you can follow this link right here, and um, we would love that. So. If you're brand new to chaos, we would still love to, to put you in here. If you were in chaos three years ago and now you've not ever been back, totally fine. We would still love to put you in there. Um, so yeah, any questions about that? No, I've added a bunch of photos. I saw that, thank you, Sean. And I, I should... I'll try to find some more. I have a lot of group photos and things from our events over the years that I'll dig up. I started the process, but didn't finish it. No worries. No worries. Um, also, if it does not have to be like chaos related, like at a chaos event or anything like that. Um, if you just have pictures of yourself or your your pet or like where you live, like your city, or like a piece of artwork that you did, some digital art, that's also fine. Um, whatever you want. So yeah, you have till February 15th and then we're gonna try to put it together. And when we say we, we I mean me and I'm pretty slow, so it'll take a while, but. So if you're past this 15th, we'll, we'll talk about it because chances are I probably haven't started it yet. So you're good. Uh, all right, next item is um, just a reminder that our office hours are open now every Tuesday from nine to 10 US Central Time. Uh, we had a really great session today. We have five people showing up and I see a few of them are here today on the call. Ayush and Enoch, thank you, welcome. Glad to see you again. Um, so that was super fun. And um, so if you see anyone that's new to chaos, maybe remind them that that's just a super open space. Just we're just chatting or asking questions. I'm just talking a little bit about chaos. And Ruth was there as well. And Ruth was a tremendous help. So I'm really happy that Ruth was there. And Ruth will also be joining me, I think, every Tuesday. So you can come hang out with us. We would love it. So even if you've been in chaos for a while and you still have some questions, you can you can come anytime you want. Just hang out with us, it's totally fine. No agenda, nothing. You don't have to register, just show up. Uh, questions about that? Okay, all right, we're doing good. Uh, next one is um, to our newcomers. It, we do have a form that would be great if you could fill it out. It just helps us kind of know like what your interests are and like how familiar you are with chaos and things like that. So if you haven't filled that form out, we would really appreciate that if you could. Um, so thank you from the community manager. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Um, and the next one is our FOSTEM talk, which we have already recorded, and um, the link is here. And it is about that DEI reflection and just kind of how things went and what we learned and how we can um, work on making our open source communities be more diverse, equitable, and inclusive, as you can see that here. It is on this Saturday uh, at 1310. I don't know what time zone that's in. Central European time. Yeah. Awesome. And so you will have to figure out what time it is for you there. Um, and like I said, it is a recording. It was kind of a panel discussion with um, several of us that were on that DEI audit team. And, um, but we will be joining, I think Sean and I are joining, right? Is that right? Yeah. In real time. For in real time on the FOSDEM thing. Yeah. We're in this uh, open source design track thing, whatever. Yep. It's a, it's a Q and A. Could you send a meeting notice out? For, or wait a minute, I think I have a meeting notice. Oh, no, I don't know if I have a meeting notice for that on my calendar. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to join that. Like, are we supposed to join as speakers or something? Like, I don't know how to do that. I guess we should look into it. This is this is an association with the talk that that Matt's the that was recorded February or January twenty sixth. Is yeah, that's correct. When we just recorded. Yeah, that I that I missed somehow. No, 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 no. Oh, the you details. were there. 
Yeah, as far as I'm, I know, none of the details have gone out. Um, I've recorded a talk in a different track as well. Like, I don't know which matrix channel I need to join. None of that information's gone out unless I missed it. So I, I have not yeah. seen anything. And then, no. uh, like, you'll see. Yeah. I mean, based on my experience from last year, because this has always been in person, right? Like, you'll see a flurry of email, like Thursday okay. and Friday. I, fingers crossed it's so, like you're joined here and then... yeah yeah speakers join here and then okay. you need to wait to get q a after your recording etc cetera, etc cetera. so but yeah this year in particular all the announcement and stuff there were they came out later because they were going back and forth on what kind of event they want to have in person versus hybrid versus virtual and i think things are just slow but it's a little chaotic <clears throat> So Matt, I guess when you get that information, if you'll just it, uh, whenever I hear anything, I'll <laughs> let you know. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna have to do it. So <laughs> I I actually um I did find the link to the room, which includes a video with chat link and some other things. Ooh. So I don't know if this is right. So hopefully somebody from Fosdem will confirm that, but I'll put the link that I found through the power of Google here. And, and we'll see if that is in fact correct. Sophia, in answer to your question, I think that's right. I think. Because like, that's like 6 a.m. for Sean. So have fun. But 7 a.m. is pretty early. Um, can I ask something selfish then? Yeah. Um, can you share your talk with this group after it airs anyway? I just. I don't really think I have a good track record of waking up before 9 a.m. any day of the week, less long as Saturday. <laughs> yeah, the recording will be posted here anyways by the event organizers. Oh, so great. It'll all be, yeah, it'll all be public. So we can go back to this link and find it. Yeah, yeah. There will be a new link for the recording. Thank you. And I believe we're going to be releasing the video or the audio as a chaos cast as well, of a version of it. Um, we kind of did both things at once. So um, yep. it should be on Chaos Cast also. Yes. Someday, I don't know when, but sometime. Okay, any other questions about Ostem? All right. Ray, when is your talk? What's your talk on? Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, related to diversity and inclusion too, uh, doing more inclusive uh, community recognition. It's Sunday, it's like around 7 a.m. my time. Let me find it. Yeah, drop a link in the minutes because that sounds yeah, really interesting. Cool. Anybody yeah, else talking at Austin? And if, you've, if you follow the second link I put in the minutes, you can actually sign up for the matrix thing and get into the room and have all that pre-configured if you want. And that's, I believe the, the video I think is gonna either be post, I know it's gonna be run live. It's not available yet, but it'll be, I, I think it's gonna be available after the event. Nice, here's Ray's talk, very cool. Thanks Ray. You bet. All right, I see we have seven minutes left and we have one more item. Y'all, we are awesome. I we love are. that you're doing this so well today. Some days are rougher than others. This one's great. Okay, um, OSS Summit North America CFP, yeah, deadline I, March 14th. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that to people's attention. The calls are open now, but we often have a number of chaos and related talks, workshops, tutorials there. And it's both in Austin and virtual, I imagine, how much of each is going to depend on lots of things. And I, then I think, uh, do we want to try to do a chaos con? There is the, the next question, which we don't need to answer today, but we probably need to start thinking about. I know Don had suggested that we attach a chaos con to the Europe event, just because we did have a North America event last year. Yeah, and I'm good with that. Um, that would also give us a little bit more time because it's not till September. Mm -hmm. I, I um, I'm totally fine with that. 
Yep. I'm okay with that too. A lot of topics here. I'm sure we if fit somewhere. Sorry? I'm sure we fit somewhere in there. Uh, I have no idea. No doubt we would. Yeah. I, I would say though, if we don't do a chaos con here, though, it'd be nice to do a meetup if folks are around. I don't know if I'll be there yet, but you don't have to do anything formal. It can just be meetup coffee. I would, that would be great. I mean, for when is it? June. June 21st. I mean, yeah. 20. My first reaction is that I would be there. Yeah, my, my first reaction as well. The call is also open for Dublin, September 13th to 16th for OSS Summit Europe. Oh, where's that link? Um, I'm going to put that in there. Following the uh, Seattle Chaos Con, we kind of did a little bit of a lessons learned on uh, how we filmed that and how we had a virtual presence. So uh, if we do decide we just want to do the uh, Chaos Con Europe this year and just do the one, uh, we do have some ideas on how we can improve our uh, virtual access for the event. So. <clears throat> Sorry, and to Kevin's point, we here's the issue where if um, anybody has any feedback from last time or has in the in between then and now has been to a good virtual event that wants to share some ideas here, here you go. Here's where it is. 291 in GitHub. Um, you know, it put us down for bat watching. Oh, bat watching. I have a big, big in Austin. That <clears throat> I think it's the largest something of bats, <laughs> whatever you call it. It's not the great time of year for bat oh, watching. Oh, it's not. Shoot. June is not good. Oh, sorry. June. No, June is. June is. Uh, well, June often can be. It depends on how dry or how wet the year is. It's normally August in that time frame. Um, because what happens is the bats want to go out at night and if they're like getting a lot of good food and stuff like that, then they'll stay in rather than coming out at sunset. Um, but right now they're, they're hibernating at this, yeah. at this very moment. But, um, yeah, uh, I'll be able to have, um, a good idea as to whether or not the bat watching will be a good plan. You're going to have a chaos picnic and watch bats. Because remember, That's you know, really lives in Austin, picnic. born in Austin. So you know, I got your hookups here, honey. Perfect. Alone is on Bat Watch for us. On Bat Watch. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it's kind of funny in that my I'm sorry, I have to derail for a second. When I was eleven, there was something called Aquafest that happened on the on the lake, um, Ladybird Lake, where this is at, and um they just built that bridge. And so it hadn't been up very long. And so my grandma and I go and set up our picnic thing right underneath the bridge and not knowing that these bats had taken up nesting in it. And so when they flew out, my grandma is like covering her big poofy hair of the age, you know, running off and we're trying to make sure she's like, make sure they don't get in your hair, make sure they don't get in your hair. And so that's that's my my, my bat story from when it, when it first started in the, the early 80s. So the lesson is like bring an umbrella or like some kind of coverage for well, well you don't actually stand underneath because then you'll get guano on you um so there, there's a bunch of different places where you stand where you don't have to worry about you know getting getting accidentally hit by bats it's just that we didn't know because this was a new phenomenon that was just happening because they had just built a bridge not that long ago and the bats discovered it and were like hey this place is cool and then now it's one of the largest bat colonies in, in, in at least the northern u.s i think almost in the world but yeah I dig it. I will watch some bats all day long. I love them. <coughs> Super cute. They are cute. They are really cute. They get a bad rap. Okay. Uh, all right. We have one minute. So <coughs> if you have a question or comment, you should do that now because you have one minute left. With I have which no further you. questions or comments. All right. I will stop sharing. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to our newest people, Enoch and Ayush. Good to see you. I didn't put you on the spot and make you introduce yourselves, but if you come back next time, maybe we'll do that. If you want, you don't have to.
it's all good. Um, all right, I'll see you all around Slack. Make sure you're cheering for the Bengals every day. Every day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> every single day I'll be cheering That's for right. the Bengals. I wake up in the, the morning to oh, cheer for the Bengals. <laughs> Bye. Good night. See you all later. Bye, Bye everyone.